Hey, why do we have uppercase and lowercase letters in English? Most of you are probably thinking that the answer is obvious. You learned the uses of the two cases in like first grade, right? Uppercase letters are used to start sentences and are used at the start of names and proper nouns. Lowercase letters are used for everything else. Okay, sure, we all know how, grammatically, the two cases are used in English. But did you know that not all writing systems have upper and lower cases? Or that even other languages that use the Latin alphabet have different rules for capitalization? For instance, German capitalizes the first letters of all nouns, whether proper or improper? Is that what you call normal nouns? Right, so back to the question. Why do we use two cases? Well, let's find out. Originally, the Latin alphabet was a majuscule script, which is a fancy way of saying that it had no lowercase letters. These letters are now called Roman square capitals because of their blocky nature. They're basically the capital letters we know today. These square capitals were not the only way Latin was written, however. These blocky letters with their straight lines and basic curves worked best when carved into stone. When Romans wrote on paper, or papyrus or whatever, they used Roman cursive. This script is more rounded, as it was faster to write when writing with a quill, as opposed to a hammer and chisel. As you can see, some of our lowercase letters are starting to show themselves. But this is only the beginning of the story. The cursive letters weren't used in tandem with the capitals, and they weren't consistent either. Roman cursive inspired the later lowercase script, but the alphabet had a lot of evolving to do before we get to the two-case system we know today. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, spoken Latin gave way to various Romance languages in the Old Roman territories. That said, written Latin was still very much used, and would continue to be the preferred language of writing for hundreds of years. But Latin had no case system, so the scripts that were created in the Middle Ages to write Latin had no concept of lower or uppercase writing. We won't go through a comprehensive history of Latin script types, because the subject is vast, and would be way too long. I mean, look at this chart showing a simplified relationship between the different scripts through to the modern day. We'll only tackle a few of these, the ones that have the most bearing on answering our question. The first script we'll look at is the Unseal script. It was used throughout Europe in the 4th century through to the 8th century. It was a majuscule script, but since it was written on parchment or vellum, it used curves, much like Roman cursive. With this script, you can start to really see the evolution from the Roman capitals to our lowercase letters. The letters A, D, H, M, and E are all in the middle of transforming. The Uncial script and its derivations were extremely popular with scribes throughout Europe. Famous manuscripts like the Book of Kells were written using the script. The most important version of the Uncial script, as it pertains to answering the question posed in this video, was the Semi, or Half Uncial. Despite its name, this script was not an evolution of the Uncial script, but instead shared a common ancestor to the Uncial script, that being New Roman Cursive. Half Uncial was the first major minuscule script. So, we should properly define the terms majuscule and minuscule. They don't just mean uppercase and lowercase. Majuscule letters are defined by being of a uniform height. For instance, a capital A is the same as a B or C and so on. Minuscule letters, however, have variable heights. The lowercase Q or P has a descender here, and an H has an ascender here while letters like E or A have no such protrusions. Okay, cool. So with the half uncials, we almost have our lowercase script. But there's an issue here. You see, half uncial was its own script. It wasn't used in tandem with capital letters. 
No scripts at this point were bicameral, meaning using two cases. That was until Carolingian minuscule. The Carolingian script is thought to have been created, or at least finalized, by Alcuin of York, an English monk and scribe who was invited to teach at the court of Charlemagne, hence the name Carolingian. It was used during the 8th and 9th centuries in France, during the period known as the Carolingian Renaissance. That's right, there were renaissances before the Renaissance that we all know. Anyway, during this time, scribes in the court of Charlemagne and his successors copied a lot of Roman documents that were fading or falling apart to preserve the texts. This point will become important later. So the Carolingians used both this new minuscule script and also capitals reminiscent of the old unseal letters. They used these capitals for titles as well as for important words. The practice of using large decorative letters to start a page or sentence had become a common practice when making manuscripts. For instance, here is an example of that in the Book of Dura. The Carolingians were the first known to take this decorative practice and turn it into something systematized, with more or less consistent rules. Skipping forward about 700 years, we come to the Renaissance humanists. The humanists were a group of secular thinkers who rejected what they saw as a superstitious, backwards medieval world. Why do we call the medieval period the Dark Ages? Blame the humanists. They were interested in a revival of Roman ideals, in art, architecture, literature, and yes, even in typography. They weren't fans of the dominant script of the time, black letter. This script, sometimes incorrectly called Gothic, is probably what you think of when imagining medieval writing. It took over from the Carolingian script and was used for hundreds of years throughout Europe. It was even used in places like Germany and Denmark into the 19th century. Black letter is a very important part of the history of Western typography, but since it doesn't directly contribute to the question posed in this video, we'll skip its origins. The point is, the humanists wanted something different, so they went searching. And what did they find? What's this? Wow, original Roman manuscripts, they said. Look at how elegant and classic this lettering is. Surely much more sophisticated than this medieval gothic hand. Of course, the humanists didn't realize that what they had found was not actually Roman writing, but instead copies of Roman manuscripts made by the Carolingian monks in the Carolingian script. Regardless, the humanists created their own minuscule, inspired by the very medieval Carolingian script, and combined it with Romanesque square capitals, replacing the ornate Gothic capitals used before. This style of writing is essentially what is used today. So there you go, from Roman capitals through unseals, Carolingian, and finally humanist scripts, we get our two-case way of writing. A couple more things before we wrap up. 1. Printing In the 15th century, Johannes Gutenberg created the first printing press, which sparked the printing revolution. The printing press worked through movable type. There were two pieces of type for each letter. The minuscule letters were kept in a drawer closer to the printer, as these sorts were used more frequently. The capital letters were kept in a case above the main working station, so the terms lowercase for minuscules and uppercase for capitals were established. Lastly, while bicameral writing had been used since the Carolingian period, as we established, actual formalized rules in English didn't exist for centuries, with capitalization being quite haphazard. For instance, in documents like the U.S. Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, you see seemingly random words capitalized. Capitalization in this time was used basically to add emphasis, but in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, grammarians, not amused by this disorderly use of uppercase letters, created manuals defining when capitalization should be used, rules that we basically follow today. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and even share the video if you want. Bye!